Ah, soldier. Everybody loved this good old American son of a bitch. Whether it be the design of the soldier, his personality, the vast amounts of amazing cosmetics that you could put on him, the high skill ceiling for competitive types, and especially his weapons. Of course, you got the classic rocket launcher. Nearly every soldier mains go to weapon of the majority of matches due to the fact that it does, in lack of a better word, fuck loads of damage. You also got the direct hit, a weapon that rewards precision and good game set. The black box, my personal favorite. Gives the soldier a longer life duration and decent burst healing. Until you pair it with the conch and then you have insane burst healing. The Beggar's Bazooka, an oddball of a weapon that no new player would use. But with an experienced player, it can wreck house to the enemy team. Oh, and there's also the Liberty Launcher. A weapon that used to be decent at the very least until it got completely neutered when the weapon received a dreaded 25% damage penalty. So yeah, then we have the cow mangler, weapon that nobody ever talks about. Okay, people do make videos about it, but it's rare seeing someone actually talk about it. Especially well-known creators. Unless it's the whole paintable weapon thing, but we're not going to be talking about that in the video. What we will be talking about is what the weapon does and how it really helps out in the battlefield? I'm not sure how to word that, so we're just going to keep that in. But before we talk about that, let's talk about a brief history of the weapon. More of how the stats changed throughout the years. The Kalmega had quite a bit of history in terms of changes throughout the years. When it first came out on July 20th, 2011, it used to have 5 shots instead of 4, and unlike the Liberty Launcher, it still had the same damage as a Rocket Launcher. Until 2 days later, it received a 10% damage reduction and a 5% rebuild penalty. And it had a few more patches later until July 10th, 2013. It got rid of those little downsides they gave and added the set players of fire effect on the weapon and strip. Oh, and reduced the cliff from 5 to 4. In the Jungle Inferno update, they made it to where granted slash earned crits will be converted to mini crits instead. So instead of getting guaranteed crits with crits Krieg, you only get mini crits. Well shit. In March of 2018, they changed the afterburn duration from 10 seconds to 6 seconds. And finally in July of 2019, they made it to where you can destroy sticky bombs with a charge shot. I've honestly never seen this happen though. Yeah, so quite a bit of history with the changes of the weapon overall, but there's still little things that you want to know about. It was a little promotional item from the Meta Workshop. Way the fuck. That was a collaboration with Valve, actually. <laughs> the Watch Show talked a lot more about it in his Pops video, so if you want to know more about that, go watch that video after this one. Or watch it right now. I really don't care which one, either or, honestly. And yes, there were a few um, patches to the weapon, but they are more of bug fixes than anything, including the unnecessarily famous bug of how the cow mangler was able to be painted. Now we go to the main topic of the video, that being the stats of the weapon and how to effectively use it. The Cow Mangler only has 4 stats. The weapon does not require any ammo. The All Fire does a charge shot that deals more damage than normal shot, including mini crit damage and afterburn damage. It doesn't do any random crits, and guaranteed crits only to mini crits. Let's talk about them one at a time. First, we'll go to the negatives. The fact that it doesn't do random crits can be punishing at times, but in all honesty, it really shouldn't be in a discussion when it comes to balancing them in most games especially in first-person shooters. A big and negative, however, is the fact that you can only do 20% damage on buildings, meaning that point-blank hit with maximum ramp bump on, let's say a sentry, only does 22 fucking damage. Well, fuck. This is the biggest downside when it comes to this weapon, and it's incredibly frustrating to deal with. Especially since a lot of people play Engineer now. So every time you see any building, instead of just blowing them the fuck up, you run away like a little bitch unless you want to die. Well, you can use shotguns, but we'll get to that shortly. The charge shot seems self-explanatory, so let's talk about the best thing about it. Wait, what's, what's that noise? Uh... 
let's let's talk about the charge mechanic. The charge shot has two functions. One being that it does massive damage to enemy players, dealing from 170 to 199 damage, both including that charge shot damage and full afterburn. The second being that it's an EMP shot that disables any of the enemy's buildings. Let's talk about the second function really quickly. That being that it pairs decently well with shotguns. My preferred option is with the panic attack. The reason is pretty simple. It has a the fastest switch speed compared to any shotgun and the fixed spread can be incredibly reliable when it comes to, uh, you know, casual servers. But in reality, the first use of the charge shot is more reliable, that being as really good use with the banners. Since this charge shot does a fuck ton of damage, especially with a bunch of people bunched up, which happens quite a bit. Any banner really works with this weapon, but usually I use the conch since it gives you passive healing over time, and you live longer throughout the fight. Oh, and for the melee, um, honestly, it's best to use the escape plan. Maybe the equalizer, but it's really up to personal preference. Although the escape plan is the best option. That's honestly what the weapon really is. It trades the destruction capabilities of stock for more damage for the banners, giving you more of a supportive role. But professional, I hear in the background that's kind of pretty fucking far away. Can't you do that with the weapons like the Beggar's Liberty Launcher and Airstrike? Well, the Beggar's Bazooka is more used with the gunboats since you can overload jump with it. The Airstrike sounds good in concept, but it's better paired with the base jumper and the gunboat since, you know, and actually I don't have that much experience with it, so take uh, all I said with that with a pinch of salt. And the Liberty Launcher? Okay, it sounds like a good idea. The five rockets with the fact that it has faster projectiles and the fact that you can rocket jump more due to the 25% damage reduction for rocket jumps. It sounds like a good idea, right? Too bad it has a 25% damage penalty. I mean, you can try to use it with the banners, but you'll die. A lot. But there's one more stat in the game. One that made this weapon ban competitive and making this weapon one of the best options to use for new and veteran players. And this stat is the fact that it has unlimited reserve ammo. That fact alone makes this weapon from a low C tier weapon, maybe mid, depending on who you talk to, to a high B tier weapon. I think people really underappreciate this stat and I really don't understand why. Fuck, people talk more about the 25% damage penalty on the Liberty Launcher than the stat. The Liberty Launcher, one of the worst rocket launchers in Soldier's Arsenal, is talked more about in this fucking stat. Uh, anyways, like I said, this is an incredibly good stat to have. Obviously, for one, you have a limited ammo. Not really have to worry about ammo manage management. Fuck. Management at all. So while many soldiers run to dispensers constantly for health and ammo, you only have to do it for health. But if a medic tour is around, you really have to go towards dispensers. Usually. It's also really good in MVM because of this fact. Hell, I even say that it's on par with the Beggar's Bazooka because of this. But one thing I should say though is that it's best to not use the charge shot all the time only use it sparingly. That's because of the fact that you have to reload all four shots every time you use it. And in a game like Team Fortress 2, reloading four shots takes forever. So my advice is this. Use it when you're confident enough on landing the shot or if there's a bunch of enemies grouped up. One more thing to mention with this stat too. Although not using any ammo packs isn't really a big help on the majority of classes, it is a major help for both spies and engineers. Both classes rely on these ammo packs, so a soldier not required to use them is a big deal. And a real big help with these guys. Spies so they can go into the back lines and get the enemy, hopefully get at least one back stab. Possibly the medic, or, you know, the sniper. Actually, no, just go for the medic. And especially the engineer, so they can make multiple effective sentry nests around the map. And obviously everyone else too. Yeah, I know I said that it isn't a big help, but it doesn't mean that it couldn't define the difference between whether or not you win the game or not. So in, uh, just like TLDR, this stat is kind, kind of, of a big deal. deal.
Well, that's really in terms of all the things I have to say for the cow mangler. In all honesty, I'm shocked that after nearly, what, 11 years since this game came out? Or what, the gun, not the game. There isn't much talk in terms of what it can really do and how it changes soldiers from a well-rounded, pure mobile destroyer. Unless fucking pyros around to a support unit. Well, I mean, banners do that too, but you become a sole support unit. That's what I'm trying to say. There's also one more reason why I wanted to talk about the weapon. A lot of major weapons like the Direct Hit, Black Box, and even the Beggars have been talked about recently or to death at this point. So I thought it'd be fun if I talked about something that nobody really talks about. Since this weapon really does deserve to be in the spotlight, like it's brothers. Unless if it's the Liberty Launcher, you know, fuck that weapon.